Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown. Our Beginning Again retreat takes place on October 29th, and I've been interviewing our presenters so you get a teaser, a feel for what you'll experience when you join us for three hours. So I'm thrilled to introduce you to my friend from Twitter, Maureen McDermott. She's one of our presenters at our Beginning Again retreat. Maureen, thanks for being here with me. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Denise. I, I'm absolutely thrilled. So tell us why you wanted to be involved in the event as a presenter. Well, number one is you. Um, I have been following you for, uh, I found you a few years ago, just exactly when I needed to find you. And um, I haven't stopped following you and you've been such an inspiration and other people that also comment on your, on your caregiving posts and for being a caregiver for 30 years plus uh, to having that suddenly come to a stop last May, I've had to truly begin again. And um, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a lots of layers of uh, emotions and healing and things to get over and things, new things into my life. So it, it's quite the journey. And uh, I'm really looking forward to speaking more about it at the end of the month. Your mom died in May of 2021. And she died at a long term care facility in Canada. You're mm -hmm. our friend to the north, our Canadian friend. And it was traumatic and tragic. And that complicates what happens after caregiving ends. And I wonder how would you describe what was the toughest part for you after her death? Wow, that's, that's a tough question. <laughs> what the toughest part was, um, I guess, was letting go of all of those responsibilities, I don't think you realized you had until they were over. Um, example, the phone ringing and the anxiety of seeing the long-term care on the phone or an, a nurse or a doctor calling about something. Um, it's that constant, what is she doing now? Is she okay? Um, it's, yeah, gosh, there, there, there's so much. Um, I think you just literally need to rewire your brain. And I say that specifically from coming through someone being palliative in a pandemic, somebody watching them decline through a pandemic in a long-term care. Many times we weren't allowed to be with them. So then you're also dealing with so many feelings of guilt. So that's emphatically the way I'm reacting and even saying that word guilt, that's the hardest. Yeah, I think what you describe after caregiving ends is this time we have. And what's interesting and what I felt after my mom died was I had this energy to use in a different way. So even though I wasn't with my mom all the time, my thoughts were with her all the time. I was worried about her all the time. I felt heartbroken about her frailty over the time, all the time. And it felt like it put me in this fog. And then when she died and I, her death was really something that I feel blessed to say was peaceful. So even though the death was what I would say is the best case scenario, it was the, the fog lifting. And then this energy that came that I didn't realize how much I was putting out into caregiving. So I, yes, so now you have this energy source in a different way and I can see how the guilt could pull at you because you replay all the scenarios over and over and over. So go yeah. ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to add that those feelings of guilt also can be associated with the relief of their passing. And I say this from a lens of someone who was in an environment that was not conducive to someone palliative, not conducive for someone that you loved to be passing in. So when she did pass, 
Absolutely. It was like, oh, thank goodness, right? She's not suffering. She's not in any duress. I don't have to go back <laughs> to that long-term care. And that I felt so guilty about. How dare I get any pleasure or relief from not caregiving anymore? That's some of the things I really want to touch on with other caregivers, because that's yeah. huge. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We, we talk about the relief after caregiving ends because it's ever present it, it, and maybe in different doses, but there are things that you don't miss about caregiving. You, you just <laughs> you just don't miss it. But then you think, oh, my gosh, does this mean? I'm a terrible person because I don't miss these responsibilities or these situations or these experiences. And it can just do this mind game on you where you have to kind of like work through and come out the other side. Yes. And in fact, I, and we had just talked about it before the show, um, had been asked a couple of days before my mom passed to be her roommate's uh, essential caregiver. And a little bit about her, she came from a group home. So she had no family, no friends that came to, no visitors, none whatsoever. So really I took her under my wings when mom first moved in there two years ago um, because she was her roommate, right? And they became really good friends and every birthday she got spoiled in Christmas. So it was kind of a natural move to be her caregiver but I realized shortly after that that it was um it was a little bit too much going back into that physical environment walking past the room where mom passed away still um a lot of different feelings in that with different staff and it was it was just too much and I felt terrible but I I had to kind of back away and become that sort of virtual caregiver with you know letters and and gifts sent and stuff like that for now for now I'm not saying never again just for now and I love that I love that you figured out another way to stay present another way to care for her while you take care of yourself because mm -hmm. I think that sometimes we we endure so much during caregiving that I'm not sure if it just becomes a default for us where we think, well, I can continue to endure. And the truth is we all have a limit on how much we can endure. And it's okay for us to say, I can't put myself in this situation because I can't endure this any longer. Right. It's too hard for me. Yeah. So when did you feel like you were coming closer to the other side of guilt? Um, I think it took a year for all the first to, to happen first birthdays, first Christmases, Thanksgivings, et cetera. It took, it took a year to get through all of that, um, to start, um, really coming through the other side and realizing, um, and I guess, I think you're right. We, I think as caregivers, we do train our minds, perhaps even in our response systems into a caregiver mode. So it was letting go of all of that and realizing I'm good. This is my time. And I, I really need to, um, emphasize something else. And, and it's not for everybody. I am also a, a Reiki master and I'm very intuitive. I do a lot of meditating and I'm a great believer. I'm a great believer in things. And I honestly believe, and I know emphatically that my mom is still with me and I in spirit, and I feel it when I'm on the right path, I get all of these crazy little synchronicities happening that go, yes, you're doing this. And when that's happening, I'm getting away from my caregiving role. I'm doing things that are taking care of me. I'm enrolling in courses, embarking on new careers, doing things. And I can really honestly, when I stay quiet, I talk to my mom all the time, you know, and I, I, I feel and hear answers. And, and that's a real comfort. That's a real comfort for me. And I know you know, she's gone from this physical world, but I'm pretty sure that she's, she's guiding me in other ways. And, you know, those, those times of sadness that they can hit you at any time. They're like a wave, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. Those waves of grief. 
but I find there's more and more time in between crying now and there's more and more uh, smiling and there's more of me going out of the house and there's more interaction and there's more joy. There's more walks, there's more fresh air. And that's how I know I'm definitely on the other side of this. I would say what you described is peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, peace and joy. Peace and joy. Mm -hmm. I love I'm that. like a Christmas card. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. I wonder if you can share how you knew it was too soon to pursue some things in your life. I think immediately my reaction is is just my mental capacity um, with this whole uh, restrictions and um, different ways of doing things. You know, you can't just go ahead and do things that you'd want to do, say, perhaps jump on a plane and just get away for a week. So, you know, everything was just so complicated. <clears throat> Sorry. I just saw something and got sidetracked. Can you repeat the question, please? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So I'm just wondering, I guess really what I'm wondering is how did your body send the message that what you were thinking about doing was too soon to do it? Mm. I think it's just that, that knowing um, lots of emotions um, feeling scared, feeling vulnerable about things. And um, one thing that I did, and I'm not sure where I found the strength to do this, but I found after my mom passed and after my caregiving journey stopped, I really started putting down a lot of boundaries. And I think it was from discovering those things that was too soon. And I'm so uncomfortable, I'm emotional. I emphatically don't wanna be doing this and before I would just not say anything because maybe it would be rude or I would offend somebody and I would go ahead and do it anyway and live through being uncomfortable and always somehow regret it. And I think through finding that out was setting down boundaries going, I'm not ready or I'm not comfortable doing this right now. Like I said, with uh, my friend that I was caregiving for, it's not right now. That's not forever, but it's not right now. That's a really interesting question. Yeah, I love that. I love that you, in essence, figured out how to set boundaries because of your caregiving experience. Mm -hmm. I think we just, I got so intolerant of being uncomfortable and so intolerant of pleasing other people and really intolerant of just being so upset by things. And, and yeah, I think I, um, I definitely built some strength with regards to my character and what's okay with me and what's not okay with me. And when you set down boundaries, some things happen, people start kicking and <laughs> screaming and they don't like it. But I think you have to ask yourself that question. Does it sit comfortable with me? Then it's good. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you know, as people pleasers, I, I give us permission to evolve from a me pleaser, so to speak what works for me in this situation? Mm -hmm. And then, then think about, okay, how can, how can others be served in this situation? But it's not others first all the time. Exactly. Okay, here's a question from Left Field. I'm wondering, what would be a word that you would use to describe yourself during caregiving? And then a word to describe yourself after caregiving? <laughs> During caregiving, the first word that comes to my mind was consumed. Like 100% consumed. I was thinking about this um, the other day. We tried so hard to have my mom here at home with us. And as you can see in the background, there's stairs there. There's another set of stairs here. It was, it was really hard. And, but we were trying. And I, I remember it was trying to sleep. It was four o'clock in the morning and I heard something and I bolted right out of bed and started running upstairs. And my husband's like, that was the dog. I'm like, but it, are you sure it's not mom? Like <laughs> just, you know, the amount your whole, it's like your whole cellular system is on caregiving mode. 
and everything else is irrelevant. I'm type two diabetic. I would go the entire day with no food, no nutrition, you know, completely consumed. After, hmm, <laughs> I think I'm still searching for that word. <laughs> Um, again, I'm just going to say the first word that comes to my mind and being intuitive, it's usually the right one. Um, exploring, exploring. Yeah, I love that. I was thinking of the word open. I think exploring is a much better word. Yeah. It's, you know, giving yourself permission to consider. I'm going to exactly. consider. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Or be yeah, before you were consumed and now you're considering. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So our beginning again retreat is October 29th. It starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time. You're going to present. You're going to be there as an attendee. I wonder if there's one takeaway that you would get from the retreat that you would say, oh, my gosh, this was a good three hours. What would that takeaway be? Wow, so many things. Um, again, the number one thing that came to my mind was hope. Okay. To just come away with hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I love because that. there was, um, to have no hope is an incredibly, uh, stressful doesn't even cut it, catastrophic sort of place to be when you have no hope. We think things, words like suicide, ending, uh, divorce, uh, really awful things. So I want more hope. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've just given me a task, and that is <laughs> to give hope during our three-hour retreat. Maureen, I am so excited and so grateful that you're going to be a part of it and that you're going to present to help us and really find our hope. So thank you so much. It was great to connect with you today too. Thank you so much, Denise. And I'm really, really looking forward to meeting other like-minded women and uh, hopefully giving somebody else some hope as well. Uh, honestly, I think that we show up for each other is very hopeful. And that's how we start on the 29th as we're really showing up for each other. So know that when you join us, you're part of a hopeful company of individuals that want you to be better, that want you to find where you can begin again and where that will lead you. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, thanks so much for watching and listening. I'm Denise Brown. To join us at beginning our third annual Beginning Again Retreat, just go to caringourway.com and you can register, it's free. There's CEUs, you'll find out more information about the CEUs. You can earn three CEUs for 20 bucks. It's a great deal. And we'd love to connect with you. Again, go to caringourway.com. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.